Ari Shalawan, Kahala Yumla, Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh by Hashem, Rakaha Kodash, double honor to the apostles and to the elders of Great Millstone, who rule and teach well. Must peace, love, and salutations to all the brothers doing this work in truth and sincerity. Shalom. This is the brother Batak back again through the spirit with another lesson. Lord willing, it be edifying. This is the book of Hosea, chapter 6. Let me slide. Let me fix that. Hosea, chapter 6, verse 1. It says, Come, let us return unto Yahweh. And that's what we have done through the, right now. Uh, we're returning spiritually to the Lord, you know, Turn, returning back to Him, um, worshiping Him, uh, rehearsing the righteous acts. You know, um, trying to, you know, get on the Lord's good side, if you will, um, before he brings judgment upon the earth. Because if you don't, then you will be a part of that judgment. You know, <sighs> we trying to escape the perils that are coming. And the only way to escape it is to, you know, get back on the return to the Lord. Um, real quick precept. It's another precept in Hosea. Um, acknowledge. Here it is, uh, Hosea chapter 5, verse 5, I'm going to start at 14. It says, For I will be unto Ephraim as a lion, and as a young lion to the house of Judah. I, even I, would tear and go away. I would take away, and none shall rescue him. Right. And by the, in East, and the Lord did that by the hands of Esau, Edom. You know, the Lord was, he delivered us to the, the teeth of the lions, which is a, represents these Edomites, man. You know, they are our top enemy. They, they the ones that did all of this evil towards us man you know the lord used these devils these heathens to tear us down because of our sins and because of our transgressions against him verse 4 15 it says i will go and return to my place till they acknowledge their offense and seek my face and that's what we're doing we're acknowledging the, the our shortcomings we're acknowledging that we fucked up man you know that we sinned we we acknowledging that and we're and we're seeking the face of the lord which is what this wisdom knowledge and understanding man you know, we're seeking him. It says, in their affliction, they will seek me early. So we're seeking the Heavenly Father. So let's go back to Hosea 6 and 1. Um, one. Come and let us return unto Yahweh, for he had torn and he will heal us. So he is torn. The Lord is the reason why. Uh, the Esau was able to take down the Gadites and the uh, Reubenites and uh, uh, put Judah and, and um, Benjamin Levi and this, bring him over to this side of the world, put him in slavery. Uh, he, he, the Lord delivered our people into the hands of the enemy for a punishment. America is a punishment. You know, we have really come very low, man. You know, this is the punishment that the Lord has put upon our people because of their sins so we're returning it back to the lord because we know that the lord is going to make everything better he has got a remedy for all our he's going to cure us of, of all of the diseases he's going to cure us of all the sicknesses um he's going to cure us for all of the um the the problems that we're having in the life of america he's going to cure all of these things man he's going to make everything better you know it says, um, he has smitten and he has, and he will bound us up. So the Lord is the, because the, uh, according to Psalms 17 and 13, um, the wicked is the sword of the Lord. Yeah, let's go get it real quick. Psalms 17 and 13. Arise. That's what we're saying. We want the Lord to arise and do what? Execute judgment upon our enemies. Oh, Yahweh, disappoint him. Because if the Lord do not disappoint Esau, the so-called white man, he is going to fulfill his NWO. And it, it ain't no stopping him then. Because everybody will be C-H-I-P'd, you know? 
you start trying to make, forgive me, Esau's trying to make us eternal slaves under him, under him, you know, and that C-H-I-P will do that, you know, it says, cast him down, deliver him, deliver my soul from the wicked, which is thy sword. So anytime Israel did something that was against the heavenly father, the Lord sent the sword after him, which is by the hand of the enemy, by the hand of the other nations. Um, Hosea chapter six verse uh two it says after two days okay now let's let's prove what two days is that's two thousand years It's a good one. Um, um, Psalms 90 and 4, it says, For a thousand years in thy sight are but as yesterday, when it is, when it is past, and as a watch in the night. Here it is. Uh, here is what I initially wanted. Want so, Second Peter three and eight. It says, "But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing: that one day with the Lord is as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day." You know, so basically, there was two days. That two days represents what? If a one day is a thousand years, two days is two thousand years. So, um, today is two thousand twenty-three. So we're past those two days. That two days period. You know. The 2000 prophecy We're in the midst of the third day Because that's the what The uh, the second day is the ending Of that thousand year That 2000 year period And the third day is the beginning Of the uh, the 3000 So to speak You know So we're in the midst of that Third day You know So we're right now We're in that third thousand year period You know the end of that 3000 period that three that third day would be you know 3000 but we are obviously not going to make it that far <laughs> so we're in the midst of that third day it says uh hosea 6 and 2 i hope i'm not losing anybody hosea 2 i mean 6 and 2 after two days will he revive us right that's 2000 years and the third day he will raise us up so we're in that third day right now we're at the beginning of that third day you know we're 20 23 years in it says, and he and we will live in his sight. So he's gonna deliver us, man. And we're gonna live in his sight. You know, that's what the heavenly father is gonna do. But first he has to take take away take away America. He has to take Babylon the Great down so he can establish his um his righteous kingdom on the earth. And it's gonna be by the hands of our Lord Yahweh Shah. Oh, I wanted to make a point. Look up that word. Um because the Lord is um, bringing us back. He's bringing Israel back. Um, I wanted to look up this word quicken. Now, when you look up this word quicken, I believe anywhere, it means to make alive. Okay, quicken. Uh, century 1300, quicken, which means come to life, receive life. And that's what the Lord did. He He, he gave us the word, you know, which is who? Yahweh Shai is the word. And that word, what? brung us back to life that that valley of dry bones that received uh, that received that breath of life man which is this truth that's the lord that's example of the heavenly father quickening us you know so we because we was dead because of what sins okay it says re receive life also trans transive give life to also return life from the dead and we was dead because of what sins okay so the the lord has quickened us he's 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 revived us you know he's awakened us back to life by who by by your um It 
it's a lot of scriptures about quicken. And, you know, we already know the definition for the word quicken. Oh, it's a good one. Um, Psalms 71 and 20. It says, Thou which hath shewed me great and sore troubles shall quicken me again. So we, all of us have seen great and sore troubles, man. But the Lord is going to quicken us because we was dead. The congregation of the dead. It says, and shall bring me again from the depths of the earth. Psalms 1, 119 and 159. It says, consider, I love thy precepts. Quicken me, O Yahweh according to thy loving kindness. So we was made alive through who Yahweh Shah. All right. Um, Job, I mean, John 5 and 21, it says, for as the father raises up the dead and quickeneth them, even so the son, the son quickeneth whom he will. So that's very, very self-explanatory, man. Um, let's see. John 6 and 63. It is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. So that's how we was brought back to life because of the word that Yahweh Shah spoke. Because, you know, we was in the world going on about our measly uh, slavery as lives until we heard the word and that word awakened something in us, man. You know, it, 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 it awakened us, so to speak. It, it brought us back to life. It's like you you on your deathbed and somebody comes and lay hands on you. Yeah, and it's like you on your deathbed and your house shot comes and lays hands on you. He quickens you. He make he come makes you come back to life, man. You know, and you you rise and get on your feet. That's basically what your house shot did. When we when we when we heard the apostles teaching the word, we was awoken. We was brought back to life because we was in a dead state of mind. <laughs> Give me, all right. So the 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 the, uh, the spirit quickens, man, which comes in the form of this book. All right, let's see. Um, Romans four and seventeen. It says, "As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed, even the Most High, who quickened the dead and called those with the thing, called those things which." which be not as they were. So that's another example of the Lord quickening the dead. Romans 8 and 11. But if the spirit of him that raised up Yahweh Shai from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Hamashiach from the dead also shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. So, there are countless scriptures about us being quickened because that's exactly what happened when Yahweh uh, uh manifested his word to us in these days and times. And at this day and time, man, he quickened us. So we are made alive by Yahweh Shah. That's the example of the Lord raising us up in the last days. Because by what? By the word. The word is what's gathering us. The word is what's making us alive. The word, the word of the book is what's making us complain. The word of Yahweh Shimei Shai is what's making us go out there every week and prophesy. You know? This is what's it's compelling us to do it. You know? Oh, here's a good one. Um, Ephesians 2 and 1. It says, And you have hath he quickened whom were dead in trespasses and sins. Which is who? That pertains to Israelites. That's not for everybody. That's not for everybody. The Lord didn't quicken everybody. You know? He only quickened Israelites, man. He only came for Israel.
verse two, it says, wherein in time past, you walked course, according to the course of this world. Exactly. Because when we was in the world, we was following after the ways of the world. We was lost. We was dead. We didn't know who we were. We was in a, a, a dead state of mind until we heard the word and something clicked. Our brain started functioning, so to speak, <laughs> according to the prince of the power of power of the air, which is Satan, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Right. Because everybody in the world is following after the vibration of Satan. man, And we was one before we came into the truth. But now we're following after the spirit and power. Let me see. Let me see. Jump. I'm gonna jump verse down to the verse four. It says, "But the Most High, which is rich in mercy, for He is great, His great love wherewith He loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Hamashiach. By grace are ye saved." So, where we have been quickened. So that backs up what it says in Hosea six. Let's go back. Hosea chapter six. Verse 1, come and let us return unto Yahweh, for he had torn and he will heal us. He has smitten and he will bind us up. After two days, he will revive us. What was that revive? What does revive mean? Bring back to life. And the third day, he will raise us up and we shall live in his sight. This is the book of Revelations, chapter 11. Verse 11, it says, and after three days and a half, the spirit of life from the most high entered into them and they stood upon their feet and great fear fell upon them which saw them. So great fear fell upon is falling upon our enemies right now, man. These devils are scared. They might not, you might not see it, but these devils are scared. Best believe it, man. They're scared, you know, because we have been in this dead state of mind. We have we have uh, been under the, the deception of Esau, Edom until up around the time the Lord started awakening Israelites, man, which is around 1969, right? 1970, man. You know, when uh, Rabbi Abba Bivens came on the scene, you know, and uh, broke off according to the, what the apostles teach. He broke off from the commandment keepers, you know, and he taught our elders. And their elders taught our elders. Their elders taught, you know, our elders, you know. So the Lord has quickened us. He made us alive by, you know, the word, which is came by our version of John the Baptist in this time, which is Rabbi Abba Bivens, which we believe he was John the Baptist coming back, you know, turning the hearts of the fathers to the sons and the sons to the fathers, man. He, he made us, he returned, uh, turned us back to the heavenly father. So, the point being, I wanted to get, you know, the these devils are scared because we're starting to waking up. We're waking up. Verse 12, it says, and they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud and their enemies beheld them. So their enemies beheld them, man. These devils seeing us wake up, seeing us push Israel all throughout the earth. And they're scared, man. And they're going to see us, they're going to see the Israelites, the elect of Israel, they're going to be delivered from um, America, a.k.a. Babylon the Great. Well, Babylon the Great, a.k.a. America. So, that come up hither is the salvation of Israel. Verse 13, in the same hour was there a great earthquake, which is what the nuclear, the nuclear destruction and the 10th part of the city fell. Now that's talking about America, a.k.a. Babylon the Great, because you got something called, uh, it's representing America because of the 10, the 10 uh, FEMA regions and also the 10 uh, different, uh, was it uh, zip codes? Is it zip codes? If I'm not mistaken, but most importantly, that that's representing America because America has ten FEMA regions and they have ten zip code areas. That's so that represents America. The ten part of the city fell. That's America. And then the earthquake was slain of men seven thousand, which means completion. 
and the and the remnant and the remnant were affrighted and gave glory to the God of heaven. The second woe is past, and behold, the third woe cometh quickly. So that that second woe is World War Two, because World War Two ended around nineteen forty five ish, the nineteen forties, if I'm not mistaken. So that was that was when World War Two ended. Because I believe that's when 1945 is when America dropped that bomb on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. So I believe it was 1945 when that war ended. You know? And it wouldn't take nothing but a quick Google search. Because, hey, Amer everybody in B America, a.k.a. Babylon the Great, is going to die. Whoever's on this side of the world is going to die in this in, in America. Um, when did World War II end? World War II ended in 1945, okay? And so, 20 years, let's say, 25 years after that, no, that 20 years will be, uh, 20 years will be 1965 plus five. So, 25 years after that, that's when, like, 1970, 1960, 69, 70, that's when uh, Rabbi Abba Biggins came on the scene. So, 25 years, and that's why the scripture says what? This third world coming quickly. You know, so Revelations um, 11 and 14, the second woe is passed, which is the World War Three, World War Two, Slocky. And behold, the third woe cometh quickly. Now, an example of the third woe. Let me see. When did the Cold War start? So the Cold War period happened right after World War Two. <laughs> The Cold War period happened right after World War II. So, you see, it started in March 12, 1947, and it ended on December 26, 1991. See, the Cold War, during the Cold War, there was, let's see, why did when did the Cold War start and why? Let's read this. It says, as World War II is transform, transformed, both the United States and the USSR turning the nations into formidable world powers, competition between the two increased following the death of the Axis powers an ide ideological and political rival between the United States and the U.S. You, the USSR gave way to a start of the Cold War, which there was like there, the Cold War was basically a period of time where the two world powers, which was America and R the USSR at the time, they was they was having they was having a period of let's see competition seeing who was going to dominate the world and there has always been tension between america and russia okay so the cold war was a period of heightened tensions between the u.s and the soviet union uh lasting from 1945 to 1991 the two nations never directly fought but instead engaged in proxy wars to advance their own ideolog uh, ideologies It says the the U.S. aimed aim, the U.S. aiming to repel communism and the USSR seeking to spread it. So, so it was just a little back and forth feud, which many times um, during the Cold War it could have started actually a weird a real war. You know, like example, the Cuban Missile Crisis. Okay, let's look up on this: the Cuban Missile Crisis. The Cuban Missile Crisis. Also known as October Crisis of 1962 in Cuba, the Caribbean Crisis. Oh, let's see. Uh, it says a confrontation between the U.S. and the Soviet Union, which escalated escalated into an international crisis when America's deployments of missiles in Italy and Turkey were matched by Soviet deployment deployments of similar ballistic missiles in Cuba. So, uh, uh, because. America, the U.S. was pl planning, basically putting nuclear missiles on Russia's doorstep. Russia was like, okay, we're going to do the same thing. So they put missiles in Cuba. Now, that could have that could have led to, at, at around the time of this, this could have led to something real bad, man. Okay, it says, but despite the short time frame, the Cuban Missile Crisis 
remains a defining moment in national security and nuclear war preparation. The confrontation is often considered the closest the Cold War came to escalating into a full-scale nuclear war. Right. See, this third woe cometh quickly. So, the Heavenly Father was holding the Lord stopped this from happening. It wasn't it wasn't time yet. It wasn't time for the Lord to destroy America. A lot of other precepts had to be fulfilled, like the MOTB. But this was just the tensions was heightened. This could have this could have led into a nuclear war. America could have been destroyed back then. So that that just shows the Lord was the Lord is itching. The Lord is itching to destroy this damn place, man. You know? But now, America's, I mean, Russia's missiles have gotten way more, uh, way more, um, that's the word I'm looking for. They have gotten way more destructive. Now, here's a map that shows the, the, how close, <laughs> uh, Russia's missiles was gonna, was gonna be to the United States, which is very fucking close, man. Look at this shit. Look at this. The Cuban Missile Crisis. You got six, 630 nautical miles and uh, all of Florida be gone. It says Soviet military buildup in Cuba. <laughs> See? Esau... These them Russians were check was checkmating America. It was checkmating their ass, man. It was a chess game. So eventually that day is gonna come where America's gonna be destroyed by fire, which is gonna be nuclear fire, which America's not gonna rise up from that again. And you Edomites are going into slavery after that. Malachi 4 and 1. For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven. So that's talking about when the Heavenly Father unleashed those angels that's holding back that wind, which is that destroying wind. Let's go, let's go real quick. I remember this I remember this precept. Uh let's go to Jeremiah real quick. It believes 51 and 1. This is um Jeremiah 51 and 1. Thus said Yahweh, behold, I will raise up against Babylon and against them that dwell in this midst of them that rise against me a destroying wind now that destroying wind is talking about a, a hot a hot destroying wind is going to come as a result of those the detonation of nuclear bombs uh malachi 4 and 1 for behold the day cometh that shall burn as an oven and all the proud yea and all that do wickedly shall be stubble and the day that cometh shall burn them up said yahweh of hosts that it shall leave them neither root nor branch so america's going to be completely destroyed and it's not going to leave esau nothing to stand on man you know like you know like the apostles brung out concerning this scripture uh if you if you if you um if you cut a tree down, but you don't destroy the root, it's going to grow back. You know, and I actually have seen that, you know, you cut a tree down and you, but you don't destroy the root. That tree is going to regrow, man. So it said it shall leave them neither root nor branch. That means the Lord is going to completely uproot you devils, man. He's going to take you up by the roots. So you ain't coming back. <laughs> you are not coming back. You're going to have a chance to come back. <laughs> Like you, the Lord is gonna completely destroy you. He's gonna grab you up by the roots, man. So it's gonna burn you even down to the core. Let me see. This is the book of Job, chapter 20, verse 24. I'm gonna start at 23. It says, When he is about to fill his belly, the most high shall cast the fear of his wrath upon him. And shall rain, rain in upon him while he is eating. So, that's when you about to fulfill your desire, Esau. The Heavenly Father is going to cast fire upon you. Which is nuclear fire. Verse 24. He shall flee from the iron weapon. And the bow of steel, which is the nuclear missile, shall strike him through. You know, so... Verse 25, it is drawn and cometh out of the body. Yea, the glittering sword cometh out of his gall. Terrors are upon him. And that's what's coming upon you devils, man. 
The Lord is bringing nuclear missiles upon you. Nuclear destruction. Now, the elites are going to escape this description because they're going to be the first fruits, the first ones to go into slavery. Um, Psalms 11 and um, verse 6, it says, Upon the wicked he, reigns, he shall rain snares, fire and brimstone, and a horrible tempest. A tempest is basically a, a horrible, a horrible wind, a very strong wind, go, which goes back to Jeremiah 51. This shall be the portion of their cup. So this is what you devils got coming. That destroying, let me see, tempest. Tempest. It says violent storm, storm, uh, commotion battle, plague. Oh, plague. <laughs> it says plague. Let's see. Remember what it says in Zechariah. It says plague, affliction, calamity, evil, surge, scourge, severe trouble or vexation. Okay, it says um, plague, a tempest. It says a violent commotion. Tempest, it says a storm, hurricane, tornado, cyclone, uh, typhoon, which brings brings about a horrible wind. That's what a tempest brings, horrible winds, like a storm. A hurricane brings very strong winds. Tornadoes bring strong winds, cyclones, typhoons, superstorms. Okay, it says tum uh, tumult, turbulence, disturbance, disorder, chaos, disruption, commotion, uproar. So, um, Psalms 11 and um, verse 6. Upon the wicked he shall rain snares, fire, and brimstone, and a horrible tempest. This shall be the portion of their cup for you, for the righteous loveth Yahweh. Right. So like it's for the righteous loveth. No, forgive me. Um, Psalms 11 and 7. For the righteous Yahweh loveth righteousness. His countenance doth behold the upright, which is the elect. So we're looking, we're looking forward to the destruction of America, Babylon, the great, uh, which we Lord willing will see with our own eyes, man. You know, the scripture says with the reward, you shall see the reward of the wicked. So these devils going to see, you know, the elect being beamed up. Beamed up and taken up out of this place. When brought my experience. So, yeah, um, the the wicked are going to see the elect when they be delivered. So. Lord William, verse edified. With this lesson, I'm gonna close out by giving all praises and the glory to Yahweh by Shem Shah, by Shem Rakakodash, the bond of the apostles and to the elders of the great millstone who really teach well. Most peace, love, and salutation to our brothers from this work and truth and sincerity. Whether it's a shalom, kum yasha Allah, wa ababa ba, wa ababa adawam, a shalom, a Lord willing, this lesson was edifying. Till next time, I'm gonna say shalom.